God's uh, decision to use the cross as his um, greatest expression of love, or one of his express greatest expression of love, is so, in some ways, so genius. And um, we think about it, it really is the, um, the distinguishing mark in many ways of our God compared to the God that um, other religions may believe. Of course, the the God that becomes incarnate is in itself uh, mind-boggling, that God becomes flesh to dwell among us is itself uh, what distinguishes us as Christians. But we take it even further, and St. Paul even calls it a scandal, that this not only is it a scandal is to think that God would become human just like us, but that he would lower himself to the horrendous, to the humiliating, uh, degree that he did upon the cross. And there's just endless, endless reflection possible about the cross. It truly is the sum and summary of our faith. It is the target of everything that we believe in. It is definitive. It defines um, everything about our spirituality, um, how we operate, how we think. It all comes back to the cross. And we can talk about it endlessly, but uh, I think it's this living challenge. So it's every single day, a living challenge to us. And, it, it, and it's, a, it's a place that teaches us constantly about what we need to do that day. And a few places we might think about today. Love, of course, uh, the cross, of course, symbolizes um, sacrificial love. And Jesus telling us, God is telling us, that truly to conquer the sins of the world, the ordinary, mediocre, the mediocre way, is just not enough. And he's calling for an army of people who will have the trust and the courage and the humility to unite with him and go just an extra step further and to give until it hurts, to sacrifice. When we look at any community, faith that is vibrant and truly authentic and united, it has a, uh, has a community of people that knows how to sacrifice and give until it hurts, spending their time, energy, and extra effort uh, for other people. Uh, when we look at a world that needs to be a better place, it's because we have so many people who are willing to go that extra mile. And so we need to think, how can I in some way be sacrificial in my love? Either to the poor, to this community here. Maybe there's sacrificial love necessary in your own immediate family. Another thing that perhaps maybe the, we can um, look at the cross and learn, about, learn from is um, something that many probably don't think about. Um, but sometimes I also, many times I forget. And that is the, um, the idea of penance. Uh, if you think about it, the cross is Jesus doing penance for other people's sins. And when we look at um, the uh, apparitions of Mary, especially at Fatima and at Lourdes, and other places, one of the things she implores the people to do is to do penance. And uh, she even repeats it several times, penance, penance, penance. How often do we think about that I will do a little act of penance today, not really only for my sins, but for the sins of other people? When, um, when the bishops say that the anniversary of Roe versus Wade is a day of penance, what does he mean? What do they mean by that? And so when we fast and when we um, you know, do an act of sacrifice as a form of penance, not necessarily just for our sins, but sins of the world, we are imitating the cross. And how often do we think about that? That's what I'll do. Maybe somebody really wronged you, or you saw some really terrible injustice on the news or something, and how often do we think, I'm going to do penance for those people. I'll do it instead, because chances are they're not going to do it. But Jesus, that's what the cross means. And for us to participate in the cross is to imitate him and to 
uh, and to realize that um, as Jesus has done, we must always do. Another area that maybe the cross challenges us is in the area of forgiveness. And this is the hardest part, I think, right? This is the hardest probably form of love is to forgive somebody who has wronged you. And we're very sensitive people. Sometimes the slightest little thing and, man, it sticks with you and it eats you up. And yet, is there a possible way we can really look at the cross, meditate upon the cross, reach our hands out towards the cross and gain its power and through the cross, learn the way of surrender, the way of humility, the way of forgiveness. And in that, maybe we will find a newfound freedom. So these are all different ways in which cross speaks out to us. And so let us look to the cross and know that yeah, maybe the price is, um, it'll, it stings a little bit or hurts a bit, but we all know what's right behind the cross. We all understand that the cross is the true way to the kingdom of heaven. It is the bridge between heaven and earth. And in some ways, the, not some ways, but in all ways, the cross really is the gateway to the kingdom of heaven. And there is, and many people have been searching and searching and searching for a more convenient, easier, feel-good way into the kingdom of heaven. People try to find that little hidden door, the back door that's easier to get into, to get to heaven. But there is no other door. It really is only one door. And that door is the cross. And so the more we learn to understand the cross and to embrace it, to not be afraid of it in our daily lives, the more when the final test comes, we'll be able to make it through that door no problem and we'll get into the kingdom of heaven.